Dear students, hearty welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Mustafa, Associate Professor in Education, Central University of Kerala. Today, we will discuss the module on human rights education and the role of the state. The major objectives of the module are to develop knowledge about the duties of state regarding human rights, acquaint with the human rights mechanisms in India, to comprehend the educational policies related to human rights, identify the role of the state in promoting human rights education, and examine the National Action Plan for Human Rights Education. Human right is inherent in freedom of thoughts and the dignity of humankind, that is manifested by efforts to ensure, respect and protect the rights from time to time. The international human rights movement was marked by the Universal Declaration of Human Rights by the United Nations on 10th of December 1948. The declaration contains a set of guarantees enabling an individual to live with dignity, to fully develop by using his or her potentials like intelligence and talents and to satisfy one's physical, mental, social and spiritual needs and aspirations. However, the world has witnessed the catastrophic violations of human rights since the adoption of the UN Charter over the years. Education has been universally considered as a panacea for all the atrocities persisting in the society. It fosters social mobility, equality and empowerment, both at the individual and collective levels. Further, it is considered as a precondition for a healthy democratic society. It is thus important that the education include the study of peace, human rights and democracy as essential to society's development. The human rights education was decided to be introduced at all levels of education at the International Congress on Teaching of Human Rights, 1978, and at the Vienna Conference, 1993, of the UN Member State. It was in the World Congress on Human Rights held at Delhi during 1990, which urged to comprehend human rights education, HRE, to encompass formal, non-formal and informal systems, extending its reach to policy makers, parents and community. Taking into account the World Plan of Action on Education for Human Rights and Democracy, adopted March 1993 by the International Congress on Education for Human Rights and Democracy of the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, and other human rights instruments. The World Conference on Human Rights recommends that states develop specific programs and strategies for ensuring the widest human rights education and the dissemination of public information. Indian constitution guarantees its citizens various fundamental rights with provision for mechanisms to enforce such rights. While the basic objectives are defined in the preamble, the protection of human freedom and liberties are emphasized in fundamental rights and directive principles of the state policy. At the same time, the constitution also obliges its citizen to do certain fundamental duties which enables the maintenance and sustenance of peace and order in the nation. Now, let us go through the human rights enforcement mechanism in India. It mainly comes under the following categories. 1. Human Rights Enforcement Mechanism under the Constitution of India. This can be divided which is enforced by the Supreme Court of India and the High Courts in India. Second is 
Human Rights Enforcement Mechanism under the Protection of Human Rights Act 1993. Here, the categories are the National Human Rights Commission established, the State Human Rights Commission established, and the Human Rights Courts in districts of the country. And the third broad category is the other specific national commissions for the promotion and protection of human rights in India. It can be classified into the National Commission for Women, the National Commission for Children, the National Commission for Minorities, the National Commission for Scheduled Caste, the National Commission for Scheduled Tribes, and the National Commission for Backward Classes. And the fourth category is the non-governmental organization for the promotion and protection of human right. Now, let us take a look at the Protection of Human Right Act, PHRA and National Human Rights Commission, NHRC and the State Human Rights Commission, SHRC. The Protection of Human Rights Act came into existence in 1993. The PHRA provides the legal framework of the NHRC, the HSRC and the Human Rights Court. The PHRA of 1993 was subject to amendment in 2006 for the effective enforcement of human rights of the Indian citizen. It was under the legislative mandate of the PHRA 1993 and the NHRC was established during October 12, 1993. NHRC was established for the promotion and protection of human rights. Apart from this, it popularizes the studies conducted and research produced by these institutions with credibility and respect. NHRC also envisages SHRCs at state level and human rights courts at district level for better protection and safeguarding of human rights in India. Above all, NHRC recognizes the significance of human rights education, believing that education is the key to promote and protect human rights and encourages various educational agencies like UGC, NCRT, SERT, colleges and universities to include human rights in the curriculum, thereby impart human rights education. The SHRCs are missionary bodies for the promotion, protection and safeguarding of human rights at state level. The SHRCs are set up by the state government as prescribed by section 21st 1 of the PHRA Act 1993. The SHRCs are equally empowered to perform all the functions entrusted to the NHRC. The SHRC also play a prominent role in encouraging and promoting human rights education in the state. Now let us go through the educational policies and human rights. The reports of Education Commission and statements of educational policies affirmed the efforts to make timely reformations catering to the needs of the nation. All these emphasize the importance and need of right to education and education for human rights. This will contribute to creating a nation where the values are upheld and rights are safeguarded specifically for women, scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, minorities and the physically handicapped. It also defines the basic components of the core curriculum that reflects some important human right concerns. The National Curriculum Framework NCF of 2005 has rightly pointed out that the greatest national challenge for education was to strengthen the participatory democracy and the values enshrined in the constitution. This sheds light on the need for citizenship training by making 
equality and social justice as a central theme. NCF has also mentioned that since human rights have universal frame of reference, children should be introduced to universal values in the manner most appropriate for their age. It has also pointed out that human rights are the central to the concept of peace and that peace cannot prevail if human rights are violated. The Kerala Curriculum Framework of 2007 also emphasizes the need to raise awareness and to actualize the rights enshrined in the constitution and also the rights enumerated in the UN Conventions on Child Rights, CRC for Convention on the Rights of Children, Women Rights, CEDAW, the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, and the Human Rights UNCHR, that is United Nations Commission on Human Rights. It is stressful that only an erudite community will be knowledgeable about the human rights entitled for an individual how to protect them. Hence, it is important for promote human rights literacy, just not in order to make them educated and capable of earning, but also recognize their rights towards themselves and each other. In this context, it is important to state that nation has grave responsibility of promoting and safeguarding human rights of its citizen. Now, let us have a look at the duties of a nation towards this. The duties of state. According to the Human Rights Declaration, state have a general responsibility to implement and respect all the provisions of the declaration. However, some of the provisions make particular reference to the role of state and indicate that each state has a responsibility and duty to protect, promote and implement human rights, ensure that all persons under its jurisdiction are able to enjoy all social, economic, political and other rights and freedoms in practice adopt such legislative, administrative and other steps as may be necessary to ensure effective implementation of rights and freedoms, to provide an effective remedy for persons who claim to have been victims of human rights violation, conduct prompt and impartial investigations of alleged violations of human rights, take all the necessary measures to ensure the protection of every individual against any violence, threats and retaliation, adverse discrimination, pressure or any other arbitrary action as a consequence of his or her legitimate exercise over the rights referred to in the declaration. Promote public understanding of civil political, economic and cultural right. Ensure and support the creation and development of independent national institution for the promotion and protection of human rights such as ombudsman or human rights commissions. And promote and facilitate the teaching of human rights at all levels of formal education and professional training. Having entrusted with duties as per the Human Rights Declaration, the state has a vital role to play with regard to human rights of its citizen. Let us now identify the role of the state in human rights education. The primary role is construction of a comprehensive scheme of education. The state should construct a comprehensive scheme of education by considering the varied needs of citizen, such as a scheme should provide opportunities for the learner to imbibe the qualities and values. At the same time, 
develop awareness about the fundamental duties and rights enshrined in the constitution for good citizenship. This requires formulating policies and frameworks for teaching and learning essentially involving the development of the curriculum that are based on accepted foundational principles. It is worthwhile to examine the curriculum development in this context. The design of the curriculum needs to be built on the philosophical, psychological and sociological basis of curriculum planning and development. The school curriculum should work towards the holistic development of the individual. Provision should be made by the state to include human rights in the curriculum for all stages of education. It should emphasize the need for human right education through formal, non-formal and informal means of education. It may not only be incorporated into the formal curriculum as a separate subject, but also integrated into the entire curriculum including the hidden curriculum. It should also state clear cut objectives and method, strategies and tools to be adopted for attainment of the stated objectives. It is also important to incorporate noble values and ideas of human rights such as democracy, peace and social justice. And let us have a discussion on the context of curriculum organization. Human right education components may be incorporated into the curriculum through direct, indirect or implicit context. Incorporating HRE into the curriculum through the direct context involves including specific topics or subjects on human rights into various subjects like science, maths, etc. This may also include designing courses on human rights at undergraduate, postgraduate or diploma levels. Under indirect context of curriculum organization, the school subjects are used as vehicle for human right education. And the implicit context involves the creation of a socio-cultural ethos in schools that will develop the students' understanding of human rights. And now let us see the curricular transaction approach. The approach adopted for any kind of education should be relevant and result oriented. The National Curriculum Framework for School Education by NCRT has recommended an integrated approach which is considered as the basic approach to human right education. This may be done through curricular as well as co-curricular activities. Human rights education at elementary level. The major subject areas significant to human rights at the lower primary stage include social studies, environmental studies and languages. Human rights issues are integrated into environmental studies starting with the child's immediate environment and gradually progressing with the district, state, country and the world. Narrative and biographies of great people of India and of the world, India's freedom struggle and certain aspects of the Indian constitution should be included in this course. The language curriculum should focus on the development of compassion, tolerance and sympathy through stories and poems. Environmental studies dealing with family, neighborhood, relations, food, clothing, shelter, religious festivals and national heroes expand the knowledge and develop respect, equality and diversity. Children develop an understanding of independent India as it evolved during the freedom struggle. Learning about the nation's goals and the main feature of the constitution like fundamental rights, directive principles of state policy and 
fundamental duties as well as secularism and democracy may help to promote human rights. In the upper primary stage, the major subject areas relevant to human rights education are social studies, science and languages. History courses deal mainly with India and world history with emphasis on developing an understanding and appreciation of India's rich and diverse cultural heritage focusing on respecting the human rights of one and that of others. The human rights dimension lies in providing a critical understanding of Indian society through the ages with focus on the position of women and the inequalities created by the caste system. Children should be made aware of legislative reforms and the role of international organization in uplifting the women and children. The course in geography and civics help children to develop an appreciation for diverse ways of life of people following different cultures along with promoting the values of democracy, secularism, socialism and national integration. The thematic and ideational content in language help to promote awareness of human rights, international understanding and related issues of global significance through folk tales, legends, poems, essays and dramas. Then let us have at the secondary level. Secondary schools offer a much wider and varied range of opportunities to teach human rights and to practice and observe right and duties. Literature and language classes can be used to promote human rights education along with social relations, peace, freedom and justice. At this stage, the global perspectives and major concerns are integrated into the social science. Human rights can be taught in the context and understanding of the following. The small society focusing on family life, school and community. The larger society focusing on community, country and the state. Forms of government like democratic, dictatorship and parliamentary. United Nations and its major functions, contemporary world encompassing east-west problems, artillery, events and international personalities. Understand the world around us through studies of individual countries. Understand the family and society, economic, political and cultural interdependence and religion and philosophy of life involving the analysis of different religions, traditional beliefs and practices. In addition to this component of human rights may be taught through subjects like history, civics, science, mathematics, economics and geography by adopting integrated approach. And it will be very interesting now to study the human right education at higher education level. Foundation courses on human rights and duties at UG level to impart a general idea of the principles, aspects of human rights and duties and establish and formulate certificate programs, human rights and duties for a short duration of three to six months aiming to orient teachers, law enforcement personnel, those working or associated with NGOs and others directly engaged in the promotion of human rights and duties. Undergraduate degree courses in human rights and duties that deal with the general aspects of human rights and duties. Then postgraduate diploma courses in human rights and duties that elaborate the conceptual, philosophical, theoretical and historical aspects of human rights and duties. Postgraduate degree courses, MA, LLM in human rights and duties. The second aspect is provision of efficient teachers. 
it is the function of the state to provide the service of large number of competent and efficient teachers in order to ensure the effective implementation and transaction of the curriculum for human right education. For this, more opportunities should be provided by the state for training and development of teachers by incorporating methods and strategies for improving the quality and effectiveness of human rights education program. The third aspect is training and development program. The teachers and students should be sensitized towards the constitutional goals of justice, liberty, equality and fraternity, assuring the dignity of an individual and integration of nation. The state shall provide opportunities for training and development on human rights for teachers as well as students as a measure to provide condition for improving the efficiency of teachers. They are to be trained in content as well as pedagogy, material preparation and curriculum development as they have to be role models. For this, they may be given orientation courses and training on human rights education through governmental agencies at national and state levels like DIET, SERT, NCRT, NCT, NUPA, UGC, etc. In order for the teacher to be proficient in imparting human rights education, the state shall also provide more opportunities for creating and sustaining the quality of teachers through training for fostering knowledge, attitude and skills for the proper exercise of human rights among teachers as well as students. For this, programs like seminars, conferences, workshops, symposia, etc. may be organized that imparts a rich content knowledge and experience to teachers and students regarding human rights education. The fourth aspect is very important, remuneration to teachers. The state provides reasonable scales of payment and remuneration, including perks for the service rendered in imparting human rights education according to their qualifications, seniority and experience, workload and responsibilities. This is to enjoy a reasonable sense of security of jobs. This would enable in creating conditions which will motivate and inspire teachers on constructive and creative lines. The fifth program is courses on programs. The state should take initiative to conduct courses for those who want to pursue human rights education that leads to UG foundation course and UG degree course and PG degree course and those who wish to PG diploma and certificate courses and even to PhD program developed by the UGC in 2001st. Apart from this, short term courses and certificate by the government may also be conducted for promoting human right education. And sixth responsibility of the state, preparation of textbook, modules and e-resources. No doubt, good quality textbook and modules should be prepared by experts proficient in the field of human rights that contain rich content for developing the mental horizons of knowledge pertaining to human rights and human rights education. The state shall seek collaborated ventures wherein experts from various fields including human rights officials, officials of governmental and non-governmental organizations of human rights shares their knowledge and expertise in the production and dissemination of books and modules. This may be made easily available and accessible in the form of textbook, 
modules are e condensed to all those who aspire to learn the topic. Activities and projects, in addition to this, relating to human rights concerns and are also taken up by the schools. Then seventh one, seminars, workshops and conferences. For rejuvenating human rights education, the state should organize seminars, workshops, debates and conferences that involves expert deliberations on human rights concerns and organized and conducted at regional, state, national and international levels. The state should conduct the program either by collaborating with governmental or non-governmental organizations or sponsored basis. The outputs of such programs may be utilized fruitfully for extending the scope and possibilities of human rights education. It also augments live linkages with the realities of human rights scenario persisting in the society and nation as a whole. The programs uses in avenues for new thoughts and actions for reorienting human rights education in a time bounded manner. Then the next one is formulation of policies, laws and statute. The rights can be best protected through adequate legislation and independent judiciary, the enactment and enforcement of laws providing individuals with safeguards and remedies and the establishment of democratic institution. The state makes timely revisions of the existing policies, laws and statute and also passes new acts according to the demands of circumstances and situations of proper enforcement of law to protect and safeguard human rights and human right education. When states ratify a human right instrument, they either incorporate its provisions directly into their domestic legislation or undertake to comply in other ways with the obligations obtained therein. Then the next one is organization of boards, committees, commissions and task forces. The state should organize committees and boards for determining the aims, curriculum, method, examination system and other relevant activities concerning human right education. Sometimes the state appoints commissions of inquiry to know about the working, deficiencies and drawback of programs that are already implemented. Such bodies conduct timely reviews, evaluation and appraisal of various programs that are aimed at human rights education. Their suggestions and recommendations of these bodies are considered for further improvement of the programs and designing new programs. And the tenth one is research and development. The state takes initiatives in conducting and promoting educational studies in the form of projects and research according to its needs and requirement to solve the problems relating to human rights and explore new areas of improvement through new educational tools, strategies, methods and models for imparting human rights education in a more effective and efficient manner. The funding of such studies should be supported by the state and the findings derived from such studies may be implemented at policy levels for revolutionizing the arena of human right education. Finally, examine the national action plan for human rights education. The period of 1995 to 2004 was declared as UN Decade of Human Rights Education by the UN General Assembly Resolution of December 23, 1994. 
In pursuance of this, the NHRC pursued with the government to develop a plan of action which was finalized in October 1995, which is rightly known as the Action Plan for Human Rights Education. The National Action Plan focused on creating awareness and research through media advocacy to the deprived and special target groups of children that a right to basic minimum education is their human right. Introduction of the human right issues in the curriculum at primary and secondary level and preparation of appropriate course material for this. Training of teachers about human rights and values in collaboration with state education departments, SERTs, NCRT and NCTE etc. Introducing courses on human rights at UG and PG levels and compulsory or special purpose to be introduced at UG level. Introducing short term or long term courses on human right through distance education programs specifically through IGNO and other universities should be encouraged by UGC to take up these courses by liberally funding these courses. In order to create and make available rich resources and materials on human right, a national resource center for documentation, training and research and education in human rights is to be set up in universities and research organization under the Ministry of Human Resource Development. And IGNO has been identified for this purpose. The educational channels like Jnan Darshan and Jnan Vani under Prasar Bharati could be effectively utilized for disseminating human rights education, conducting seminars and workshops conferences and debates in colleges, universities and other educational institutions by providing financial assistance, projects, assignments, camps, social services and other field activities shall be encouraged and promoted. Publish booklets containing information regarding laws and statute and instruments of human rights for public distribution. Emphasize on sensory learning activities by using tools and materials for effectively imparting the human rights education. For this, ICT and multimedia resources may be effectively utilized. Information dissemination regarding human rights should be taken up through online media like websites including social media and networking sites. All these are reviewed and updated from time to time for maintaining a sustaining quality and meeting the contemporary needs of the society for a nation. Now, for the concluding remarks, let us sum up the essentials of this module. Human right education is essentially a catalyst for bringing coherence to a disintegrated and globalized world. Such an education must constantly evolve in order to respond to the varying needs and conditions of contemporary societies. Education undoubtedly has a major role to play for safeguarding and promoting human rights in a nation like India that aspires for unity in diversity. Towards this, the state has a major role to play for keeping track of the current activities and planning future programs that meets the demands and fulfill the urges of the citizen and the larger humanity. Only through a holistic and cooperative approach can human rights education be truly effective in guaranteeing respect for the rights of all. Thank you.